Now, airplanes that can fully fly and land themselves isn't a new thing at all. I mean, we've had it for over 60 years. Yes, everybody, today we're going to talk about the first airplane that could do exactly that. The Hawker Siddeley Trident. One of the most revolutionary airplanes in history. I mean, it's a plane of many firsts. It was the first airliner to have three engines and jet engines, I shall say. It was the fastest jet airliner for quite a long time when it launched. And overall, it has some very interesting, unique features that we're going to take a look at. For example, also, um, this nose landing gear, which is displaced. Yes, it is set off to the side. <laughs> I mean, look at this marketing material here. The Havilland DH-121 Trident Autoland demonstration. Fitted with Autoland was to become the world's first commercial airliner able to land in fog. We are now lined up on the ILS beam. Uh, in line with the runway, we're descending down the glide path and we have completed the checklist, that is we have lowered the undercarriage and flaps and made all the actions necessary to carry out an automatic landing. Right, a plane that fully landed itself. And I think the coolest thing about this is this airplane right now is really on approach to this runway right here. And the captain is just like not bothered at all. Full trust into this plane. I mean, that's the coolest thing ever. This is the 60s. For the landing flare. The flare is now beginning and we should very shortly be touching down round about now. Look at that! No trouble at all! Yes, this airplane was introduced in 1964, again over 61 years ago, and it was quite a failure. Only 117 of those were built. Today we're definitely gonna talk about why as well, now, one big problem about the Hawker Trident is that we don't have a proper flight sim model for it. This I downloaded from a web archive from like X-Plane 9, which is like 15 years old or whatever. And you can see that the texturing isn't great. We do have a 3D cockpit, which doesn't really represent the plane's proficiency at that time. You may wonder even what is that thing right there? Everybody, a moving map, which is ridiculous. Yes, a unique feature about the Hawker Trident was the magic moving map. Indeed, it looked like this and it wasn't a screen. No, it is a paper route map that is fitted to a motor that moves depending on the plane's direction and ground speed. Yeah, this airplane had a Doppler radar <laughs> fitted to it, which could measure ground speed. Yeah, no GPS at that time where you could, you know, properly find out how fast you are. No, you'd have a Doppler aerial, which is crazy. It looks like this. Before takeoff, you'd have to adjust the map so that it actually matches the runway, I guess. Map roll and its pointer would be aligned before takeoff over the departure airport by using four small buttons right there. This would have been immensely fiddly, but it works. I mean, by the way, look at the yokes right here. Remind us a lot of the Concorde yoke. Either way, let's take this airplane for a spin. Come on, let's do it. This is once again, a very old model. Uh, doesn't really look great. Right now we're running a Chinese livery. One of the operators was a Chinese airline indeed. And once again, it's just confusing to see that landing gear of the nose being like slightly pointed to the left. I mean, I guess taxing this plane would have been confusing. Should you put the nose landing gear on that center line, but that airplane will be slightly misaligned? You know what I mean? It's hard to get that right. Let's take off right now. The airplane's got quite a good amount of performance right there. Jesus Christ, that's a lot of performance. Put that landing gear up. Um, the animation is not the best, but it shows us once again the quirkiness of that nose landing gear as it comes up sideways into the fuselage. And that's generally what happened. Anyway, airplane is flying nicely. We're able to reach quite a lot of speed. Although I think right now the runway performance right here is not really realistic. As you can tell, this airplane has quite a lot of wing sweep, not a lot of wing ratio, which means that it doesn't really fly well at low speeds. Rather, it's used to high speeds, which also means that you need a lot of speed to take off and land, which definitely doesn't make runway performance very good. But there we go, we've done it. Now, I wonder if this add-on in any way supports this auto land. I mean, here's auto wave glide slope. That might just work. Let's maybe spawn into an airport that has a Cat 3 approach. Once again, something that this plane was the first plane to actually use. Let's try landing here at Zurich. There is an ILS Cat 3 approach. Let's select that. Yes, after a long flight of flying at F2 Mach 0.93, genuinely fast, we come in for a landing. I wonder if this airplane is actually able to do this now. Um, we do have autopilot. I don't know if I can trust it. I hope the autopilot is 
even on at all? Uh, what, what are you doing, autopilot? This is a public service announcement to all developers. Please develop a good hawker trident here. That is genuinely impossible. Their plane tries to kill itself. That is a problem there. Let's try not doing that. Runway is down there, though. I mean, at least the instrument work. As you can see, the localizer work. We have a wonderful flight director. Now, one good thing about this airplane is that it was able to descend very fast. 4,000 feet per minute, and even in an emergency descent, it could apparently put out reverse thrust, which I'm not able to do now. But yes, the airplane could apparently fall out of the sky. Actually, landing performance really wasn't bad, because once again, reverse thrust could be deployed in midair, and even before touchdown, which is pretty crazy. All right, let's put the flaps down all the way. Got that landing gear down, as goofy as it looks. Beautiful. Wow, it looks weird. Now, this is not really correct here. We're not. This plane would never be able to fly at 95 knots. This add-on is just absolutely outdated. Either way, let's go ahead and land her. Uh, uh oh. Okay, now she flies quite nicely. Very good. Runway is down there. Put her down smoothly. Maybe you know, rever activate reverse thrust now. Yes. Look at that. Very nice. There we go. And we're able to stop probably very fast now. Yes, the runway performance, after all, wasn't as bad as you might presume. Good. It's probably also because of the flaps, which you can put out to a million degrees, and they are huge, Jesus Christ. Now, in the beginning of this video, I mentioned that this plane was not very successful. Once again, only 117 were built. We compared that to the 727. That one was built 1,800 times. Well, because it was, after all, better. I feel like the Trident was built with so many new features and so many new things that it was kind of forgotten what airlines really needed. You know, this plane could only seat 100 to 115 passengers. It wasn't very big, mainly because it was built almost tailored for the British European Airways back then. See, Hawker really worked together with those guys and girls and they and thems. And while the BAA was happy with this plane, none of the other airliners really wanted the Trident. It was too small and too uneconomical that way. Whereas the 727 turned out to be quite versatile. I mean, okay, the, the, the first variant, the smallest one, could only see 106 passengers, but this plane could all the way extend to 155 passengers with the 727-200. But the Hawker Siddeley could not expand to a lot of passengers because these engines were just too weak, you know? I mean, okay, that was really attended with the Trident Trident 3 Bravo, which actually could fit 180 people, but only because they've managed to put a booster engine in the tail of the airplane. So this plane was, after all, a four-engine plane, so didn't really make much sense. Look here, come on, uh, let's maybe do a runway test. Because at least they're the flight model, which is, by the way, old and messed up. Seems quite promising. This plane practically needs no runway here at all. All right, come on, you can do it. You can do it. Generally, you can do it. <laughs> okay, that's not very realistic. Jesus Christ. Okay, what a trustable flight model this is. Good one. This is uh, the flies like a GTA 5 airplane. That's good. That didn't really help that a lot of people died on, on the Trident planes. Lots of whole losses, incidents, and accidents didn't really help this plane's reputation. I mean, it did fly until 1995. Yes, it was used in China until that time. For example, Air China used it up until the 90s. So really, what a shame that this airplane isn't recognized more, mainly because of all the achievements and how much it, you know, shaped our aviation world it did. That was a bad sentence. I mean, just talk about it actually getting a flight simulator model so we can, you know, travel back in time and experience what it's like to fly the Trident. So please do that. Developers, do it now. So thank you guys so, so much for watching this Hawked to a... Uh, uh, no. Uh, good night. Bye. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters. <laughs> Guns Killer, R27, James Deram, That Dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishititsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.